Good afternoon. I want to take a few moments and talk to you about this refracting telescope by G. Skyer. It is a bit more expensive than the other telescopes that I have used, so I had some high expectations that it would be better, and it is, but it is not perfect, and I'll go over the things that I have found about this telescope. It is on a magnificent tripod, very, very large, and it stands from top to bottom about four feet. So as you can see, it comes with a tray and several eyepieces. I've taken one of the eyepieces out. The others are in these containers, which it comes with. It also comes with a Barlow lens. So I'm going to put this one in here, and it just pops right in. Of course, I'm doing this left-handed, so bear with me. Fine. And it slides in very easily. There is a spotting scope, which I have the caps on, which is really helpful for finding smaller objects like planets when you are um, searching the skies. It does not line you up perfectly, but it gets you very close so that with a little bit of small effort you can find what you're looking for. I've been able to use it to find Mars and Jupiter uh, fairly easily. Um, of course, I can line it up in here, and there is a crosshair in here. And when I do that, I can't find it in here until I make just the smallest of adjustments. So, one of the things I like about this particular scope, how well you can see it, uh, I guess you'd see it pretty well. There is a scale for when you make your adjustments, and that'll be really handy for when you want to document how you have things set so that you know how to adjust them again when you go back to look at the object the next night. This eyepiece rotates, so there's a number of different ways that you can angle it. It stops about there, which is fine, but Actually, I can tighten it here, too, so that it won't go any further. Very easy. The handle here works like a typical tripod. Let me see if I can... There we go. When you have a camera, you'll notice I can't really lift up or down, but if I twist, and I'm going to overdo it on purpose, you can see now it tilts with the greatest of ease. And then to tighten it up again... You just twist, and now it's pretty balanced. Very easy. So I'm going to move to the front here. And on the front, you will notice it's got a cap. Open there, and this whole plate comes off. One thing I discovered is it works better like this versus having this removed. When I found Jupiter, it was a big blue fuzzball that looked like I was looking through uh, double vision lenses. But when I just removed this one cap, I was able to see things a lot more clearly. Uh, the tripod is adjustable, so you can adjust these to make the tripod shorter. To collapse the whole thing down, this little table right here will actually turn, and then when you do that, you can actually raise and lower at the tripod. Otherwise, when it's like this, it is locked in place, which is nice. So, there's a couple of minor things that I have found with this telescope that make it less than perfect. The first is that the eyepieces are nothing special. Um, I was able to get better results by using um, higher grade eyepieces from another telescope then things were a lot clearer. That worked well for me. The other thing that I have noticed, and this is a problem I've had with several telescopes, is that the slightest breeze makes the whole thing shake, which is expected except when you are looking through the eyepiece and everything is going like this, you can't really focus, and it gets difficult 
to really see what you're looking at when just the slightest of breeze or even the very lightest of touches like that makes everything jiggle and, and vibrate to the point that you really can't look. Otherwise, this is a nice telescope. It's better than the other telescopes that I've had and used. It's a lot more solid. It is better made. It's easy enough to overcome the problem with the eyepieces. The tripod is a different story. I'm still trying to figure out how I can get it to be more stable um, on the tripod, and I haven't come up with a solution yet. But this is a good beginner scope. It's a good place to get started. You can see a lot of neat things. You can start exploring the night sky. You can get some beautiful uh, images of the moon and you can see the planets as well. If you're looking for a place to start, this is not a bad place at all to start. It will get you up and running very quickly. There's a little bit of assembly acquired, but it's required, but it's not hard. So, if you are looking for a beginner scope that will serve you for many years and is constructed well, this is a decent one.